amazing. I wanted so badly, because she's supposed to be going around Washington, D.C. I wanted to, to like look down at the map, and we see he's just like put a big red X and a skull over everything <laughs> west of the White House. <laughs> Do not go here. You will be stabbed to death. I just like how, I mean, between the music and the way the camera was panning back and forth, her just looking at the map and then looking around, I really thought she was going to go full Dora the Explorer and just lay the map <laughs> gently on the ground and jump into it. Like, going into the map. <laughs> going into my map now. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian Cinema, because otherwise giving up cigarettes would have been the least enjoyable thing I did all week. I'm your host, No Illusions, <laughs> and sitting uh, 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, you know what's a great movie? No. This no. movie. I loved it. I don't understand <laughs> why it was terrible. It's a, a terrible message. Everything about it is pretty bad, but I was transfixed by this movie i don't know why i don't know why I, I will tell you this i reacted with strong emotions to this film but i was quitting smoking right so <laughs> they were quite random emotions yeah. and not the ones that the movie intended at any point but it was i was it was emotional for me stupid fucking chair. i might become jewish i'm not sure i it was a great i, I enjoyed it hanukkah tacular let's go <laughs> Well, I will tell you, Heath, you are as Jewish as many of the actors in this movie who play <laughs> Jewish people, so <laughs> one step ahead. And that voice you just heard, that's coming from 900 miles to my northeast and is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. Did you know that the worst parts of your culture are adorable? That's what I learned from this movie. <laughs> They're folksy and charming. Oh, I know. The Christian equivalent would have been somebody beating their slave and everybody like walking around and then he just moves and everybody laughs at like, you know, they, they just have, oh, he's still alive. He's he good. He's going to wake up. Scooby Doo. I'm ending. surprised that wasn't in this yeah, movie. Isn't really? that an Old Testament mm -hmm. thing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is. It is. All right, and of course, also joining us tonight is our special guest masochist, Eli's dog's best friend, Rachel Schwartz. <laughs> okay. Rachel, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. I've never felt so at home than I did watching this movie. <laughs> no, no. It's like Hello. a crystal ball into my future. <laughs> Hello, Rachel. Yes? Hi. Right. Best friend. Best oh, friend. no, I'm... It's actually me. It's me. I'm the best friend. I, I've seen like Eli's dog react to both of you showing up. Rachel is very clearly Madge's best friend. Yeah, that's going to ah! be that's, three fuck votes. Fuck you, Heath. I'm, so, ridiculous. I'm sorry to tell you. So, a bunch of lies. No, we're going to start with a bunch of lies. No, no go ahead. No, go ahead. No, Let's do this fucking no. movie. All right. Yeah, yeah. No. So the audience is totally down with this. They're into this. They, they got it. They got it. This is someone's first episode. <laughs> <laughs> I love that for them. <laughs> All right, so tell us, Heath, what other than magic? We watched Loving tree? Leia. No, it's great. It's great. I'm fine. I'm fine. We watched a movie called Loving Leia, and uh, it's the story of Hallmark proving it has one Jewish friend. So <laughs> that was fun. The friend is Ricky Lake, actually. Yes. And I don't even. Is she Jewish? Maybe. I don't know. Yes. She's Jewish? Okay. Did you At see her nose? That. She is definitely not Jewish. <laughs> See, that's what, all right. <laughs> no comment on that. But this movie is about the positive elements of female slavery that are built into Orthodox Judaism. It's basically agreeing with Kanye West that slavery is a choice, but they're saying it's a good one in this case. And it's terrifying. <laughs> it's, it's fifth wave feminism, damn it. It's fifth wave feminism. <laughs> More offensive than Kanye West. Agreed. So, Eli. How bad was this movie? Well, if you love Hallmark romantic comedies, but they lack the folksy charm of Fiddler on the Roof and the human <laughs> chattling of actual Judaism, you will <sighs> love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was honestly, I was curious how you were going to get a you will love this movie out of this one. Like, so <laughs> honestly, I really did. I enjoyed you guys didn't like enjoy it during while it was honestly, happening. It didn't like trick you into liking it. I liked it. Right? Thank I you. Really it was like fun it. to watch. I, I watched it and my heart filled with warmth. I really enjoyed exactly. it. I was nauseated by the misogyny throughout. 
Thank yeah, you. but the doctor was so hot. That's true. <laughs> Are we okay. just going to ignore that? Are we going to ignore his piercing blue eyes? Okay. Super hot doctor. And his crazy five o'clock shadow. Are you guys out of your fucking minds? Okay. I would like to posit a theory that for the simpler people in our world, just playing happy music in the background of Schindler's List would have convinced <laughs> Rachel and Heath that it was a romantic comedy. Okay. That is true. It wasn't Heath, a great score. You cannot score. deny it. You cannot they deny scored it. That, they could have scored that better. Yeah, I agree. No, that's true. That's I, that's I disagree. I think it was great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I meant Schindler's List. So, <laughs> oh. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst choice for a Jewish positive plot that they tried to make. <laughs> mm -hmm. So of all the stuff in the Old Testament, they went with the part that says you have to marry your dead brother's widow based on the story of Onan. A comedy, he's yeah. Guy, <laughs> he, yeah. This is a comedy about Onan and Onanism. <laughs> Onan is the guy who pulled out and masturbated on the ground to avoid having his brother's widow's baby. And now there's a word for masturbation based on his name. It's Onanism. That's the beautiful hallmark element of Judaism. They picked. <laughs> it really underscores what a fucked up book that is, though, right? And they're like looking for a rom-com plot. And they're like, oh, wait, oh, wait. Here's one about a brother and a, and a, and a widow. Oh, oh. Okay. I got to go back and watch the Ricky Lake show. Does she do like some old timey, interesting, like Jewish technicality stuff on it? I don't know. I could see that being a good talk show. All right. So I was going to go with best worst misogyny. Now, look, I'm not saying this is the most misogynistic movie we've ever done. It's up there. It's top 10. Mm -hmm. But it like. It's the most frequently that the misogyny was followed by a, ain't we wacky with our misogyny? Yes. You know, <laughs> and I feel like our other movies missed out. Come on. If he had turned the camera and loving the bad man afterwards and been like, ain't I a stinker? <laughs> now we know that Heath and Rachel would think that was a romantic comedy. There's a lot of potential here. Loving the bad man wasn't a romantic comedy. <laughs> it was at least half of that. Yeah. No, Absolutely. <laughs> It's a one-way romantic comedy. Oh, God. I masturbated to that movie, so I feel really judged <laughs> right now. Um, <laughs> what is nice. happening? That's on the internet forever. I'm really excited for that. <laughs> I hope my parents listen to this episode. <laughs> Me too. They I sure really won't. <laughs> Hi, Rachel's mom. Please don't do that, my God. Um, <laughs> Noah, can you leave in 45 seconds of silence for her mom answer? <laughs> I have to leave time for like at least enough time for Rachel's mom to say hi back. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That, that is true. That is true. I wanted to nominate this for best worst accurate racism Ooh. because all of the people in Jew face, it was incredibly <laughs> offensive. It was incredibly That's offensive. Rough. The, there was one actress who just would throw the word Meshuggah yes. around, <laughs> yes. like just, just ad lib that in. And, <laughs> And every once in a while, the grandma would be like, he's a doctor. And it was all super offensive, but none of it was wrong. Like, it was <laughs> <Yeah>. all <laughs> just a little too accurate for me to be upset. Yeah, that's the wonderful thing about anti-Semitism is if you don't grow up Jewish and you see that Jews are terrible, you're like, oh, maybe I'm internalizing the hum and the hum and the And no, we no. let you do that because yeah. every time you guys get confident that we suck, you murder us in mass. <laughs> but okay. this is a fantastic example of Jews writing an accurate movie of Jews and the <laughs> non-Christians who watched it with us being like, that's so offensive. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was going to go with best worst understanding of Judaism occasionally, right? Because this movie swings wildly from like, where did Jew beards go on the face <laughs> to maybe Orthodox Jews don't teach the girls to read for the fun of it. So like, it's like there was someone who knew nothing about Judaism and someone who knew everything about Judaism, but they weren't allowed to read the other one's draft and they both wrote the script. <laughs> Question, where do the beards go? Uh, generally not 
three quarters of the way up your eyeballs. (laughs) Okay, no, it's not that. I mean, I've seen that in in the wild, though. I have seen that. It's not entirely inaccurate. (laughs) All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Speaking of which, there's a ton of shit we're going to ask Rachel and Eli to explain on the other side of this break. So we're going to give them a chance to study up a bit. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the horrifying motivations of loving Leia. Panea. Panea. Guys, thanks so much for letting me write this. Yeah, the first ever J word Hallmark yep. movie. Sorry, sorry, J word. Ooh, oh, are we not supposed to say that? Is that your term? Ooh. What should we say? J- Jewish. Jewish is fine. You can say Jewish. Ooh, we 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 prefer not to. Yeah, if if, if that's okay. Uh, so 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 tell us what you have in mind for for a plot. Um, okay, so it's about a woman who wants to escape the Orthodox Jewish community in Brooklyn, right? So... Uh, 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 hate to interrupt. Is escape the word we want to use? Yeah, maybe, like, instead we could just say she wants to go to college. Ooh, I like that, yeah. Um, okay, well, she sees an opportunity when her husband dies. His brother, who isn't religious, agrees to a leveret marriage so he can free her. Ooh, free. Is there another way we can say that, you know? I mean, I guess he could also just randomly decide to stay married to her. Randomly. Yes, I love, love it. it that yeah, way. Yeah. Nobody misses anything if they fall asleep. Sorry, if they if they fall asleep? Yeah, our numbers reflect that, on average, Hallmark viewers manage to take in about 11% of any given movie. But we want it to be a fun 11%. percent hmm definitely. Okay, uh, anyways, right. So they end up falling in love, but her family won't accept him. You mean at first. At first, they won't accept him. Nope. So she decides to be with him instead. Okay, love it. Love it, but... Uh, just one little, little tweak. Uh, also, the family does accept him. Though. Yeah, at the end. Yeah, they do. Uh, I mean, Orthodox Jews don't just allow their... Okay, okay. Well, maybe these Orthodox J-words do. Exactly. Guys, you can say Jewish. <laughs> I, it's just, honestly, if I can speak for myself, I'm worried one will appear behind me like Candyman. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Jewish, Jewish. <laughs> Just don't say it three times. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off with a quick montage of DC stuff because this movie has to take place in a place, so why not one with a lot of readily available B-roll, I guess? Like, it never fucking matters where this is, right? Mm-mm, not once. Uh, in fact, if anything, the DC other location makes the Brooklyn location that this movie must have less likely and make less sense. Yeah, right. <laughs> this part meant so little to me that my brain completely blacked it out, <laughs> and I didn't write any notes, and then when I went back and saw this beginning part, I rewound the movie and then missed it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that the quintessential Hallmark opening? My my first note was music note, the one piece of music the Hallmark channel owns the rights to, right? Like this would be <laughs> absolutely the opening song on every Hallmark movie we've ever done. Yeah, it was confusing on this one because I was getting like, okay, this is the one Hallmark song, but now it's like beautiful Jewish doctors milling around a hospital, but the music is saying they're on horses galloping across a prairie. <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting contrast. And and we should probably talk about the doctoring that happens in these movies. Look, whoever wrote this movie knows something about Judaism, but they know staggeringly little about doctoring. <laughs> he will open this movie by like opening up a chart and making it talk like a puppet. He's like, hello, she had a heart attack. Mm, very good. Stethoscopes, mumble, mumble. Well, here's how little they know. Okay, so he, we have a little doctoring montage. Then we cut to him asleep in his office because he's been doctoring really hard. He dreams about an Orthodox Jewish gentleman by the name of Benjamin, right? Who, who appears to him and says, hey, we good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It, it, we'll find out later. He's he's like transmitted his soul across the like astral plane or something to send that very important message. Yeah. And yeah. while we're on that note, I should probably point out 
One of the least realistic things about this movie, a Jew not using their soul transmission for passive aggression. I know what I'm going to use it for. I'm just saying. <laughs> to say something to your mom or Anna's? <laughs> Can be both. All right. So, yeah. But then we get he's being woken up from this dream that he's having by his girlfriend telling him it's time for lunch. He was sleeping. What? what how much doctoring did he do before lunch? This was his 11.30 a.m. nap? He was, was really... A breakfast nap. A big, <laughs> you, people have big breakfasts, have naps. I would also just like to point out, I don't know if any of you guys noticed this, but her eyebrows are so fucking bonkers insane. Yeah. She clearly shaved off her eyebrows and drew teeny tiny little lines on them like it, like she was from Destiny's Child and this is the 90s. I found them very upsetting. <laughs> I had to double check what year this movie was made. And it is, in fact, too late for that. Yeah, no, there was a, a real contender for, like, best worst eyebrows going on in this movie. Oh, for sure. Also, like... You could tell that she drew them in in different positions for different moods in between scenes. Like by the end, when she's breaking up with him, she practically like draws them in downwards diagonals, like mad, angry eyebrows this time. So uh, this is we learned two things, though, from this scene. Number one, we learned that the rabbi he was dreaming about was his brother. And if we're paying attention, we also learned that this movie was co-produced by Ricky Lake. Um, I noticed that right away. <laughs> As he's describing his brother, he says he's a rabbi, a religious one. And if you know rabbis, you know that's not as stupid as it sounds, but it does sound super stupid. It was so stupid. I just I wrote in my notes. I'm like, please tell me there are also atheist rabbis. Then take me to where they're arguing. <laughs> <laughs> they're called reform temples, Noah. <laughs> I do actually know more atheist rabbis than I do religious ones. <laughs> In this movie's defense. Yeah. All right. So how is that not oxymoronic? <laughs> it is. It's, it's not not. Super is. Okay. Super all right. Is. All right. Cool. I can give you the explanation. They give all of their parishioners the Holocaust. Oh, okay. <laughs> pretty good reason. No, it's good. It's a great solid. reason. All right. So, but just then, as he's describing this dream, he gets a call from his mom and learns that his brother just died. Oh. Just to be clear, we will never learn how this brother died, right? Mm -mm. No, no. What we okay, will good. learn is quite immediately that it's not something we need to be sad about. Listen to the music, Hallmark viewer. This is not a sad death. This is a setup death. Don't freak out. Yeah, based on the music, we were about to learn that the brother was being baked into a town fair winning pie of some <laughs> sort. <laughs> I don't know if it's the music that triggered this, but the immediate thought that I had when we find out the brother died was, thank God it wasn't the hot brother. Because I knew a brother was going to die in this movie, and I'm just glad it, it was the one who looked like Dumbledore. <laughs> Hey, folks, sorry to bust in for a second. Noah's been going through some recent dental surgery and the recording was a little bit more painful than he thought. So we will be recording without him. But don't worry, he's fine. You can send him love and puppy pics via the Internet. Now back to the show. So now we're going to head over to Brooklyn, which is, to be fair, where Jews come from. That's where we progenerate. Huh. See, I Didn't told you, that. accurate racism. <laughs> okay. And this is where we will be introduced to the very, very offensive Jew face that goes on in this movie. These actors may as well be wearing prosthetic noses. This is so offensive. <laughs> it really is. Is this not, this is unrealistic looking Orthodox Jewish people in Brooklyn? No, um, they are realistic looking. They're just hey, Yeah, Heath, it's okay for things to be accurate and offensive at the same time, you bigot. <laughs> I, doesn't that make somebody else a bigot? God damn it. So, okay. That makes you a bigot. So, so when very obviously not Jewish brother arrives... The rabbi stops him and he has a spare yarmulke inside his hat. That was the best. <laughs> I just wrote in my notes, how many does he have in there? I just kept thinking it's like the Russian doll of yarmulkes. <laughs> <laughs> and then this, of course, is where their mother, who is not religious, comes to the funeral. And, and we should point out that among Orthodox Jews, Benjamin and the main character's mother, uh, what's the protagonist's name? I, hot doctor. Jake. Hot doctor. Jake. There hot we go. Doctor. Benjamin yeah. and Jake's mom, among Orthodox Jews, shows up to this funeral basically naked. 
just naked. Okay, I thought, all right, I'm not crazy. I, no, I was no, thinking no. like low neck for a funeral dress, <laughs> especially. Yeah, I'm so glad that Eli said that because not only is it a low neck, but it's super short. And the way they introduce her into the scene is the camera pans up starting at her feet and slowly making its way up her half naked body mm -hmm. like a scene from Magic Mike. And I was like, I thought this was a funeral. I'm so sorry. She looks like Real Housewives of Borough Park, Brooklyn. Like it, it's very, it, it's not, it looks good. It's a, it's a good thing. I'm saying it's a compliment. And this is where we're introduced to the rabbi who's played by none other than Harris Eulin, who's from, you know, Clear and Present Danger, Ghostbusters, Scarface. Well, he is the rabbi in this movie, and you can tell he's the rabbi because he has the biggest beard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is the length system yeah. to it? With, like, r ranking? They have given him a ZZ Top-esque beard, and they have placed it <laughs> approximately <laughs> at his eyebrows. <laughs> it's yeah. an unspoken rule in Jewish culture that the longer the beard, the higher up in ranks you are. Yeah. Okay. No one talks about it, but if your beard is down to the floor, you're like a deity. You're our pope. <laughs> That's why we don't have one. No one's ever made it to the floor before. Exactly. It's why I grew a beard so I can be in charge when Noah's dead. Anyways. Interesting. Uh, so uh, one other question on the Jewish culture. Yeah. Does matchmaking happen at funerals to the extent that they're depicting here? Matchmaking happens at every possible moment. Every in Jewish including culture. Funerals. Yeah. yeah it, all moments. Especially, all moments. Especially at funerals. Funerals are among <laughs> the more tasteful places that matchmaking happens. <laughs> Just whispering during the eulogy. So you want to get out of here? <laughs> like people are walking away. Yeah. That's okay. So anyway, now we cut over to the wake. It, it's kind of a wake. Okay. It's, it's supposed to be a Jew wake. But a non-Jew designed and set this scene, so it's a goyim wake. But they've like put locks and bagels everywhere to be like, see, Jew wake. Yeah, I think it was supposed to be like shiva, but it was immediately after the funeral. Also, I didn't know this about Jewish culture. Are you supposed to be wearing comfy slippers or comfy shoes? Because this bitch is at her husband's shiva and is wearing fuzzy pink slippers like she an 11 year old it's very I found strange. that insane it was an odd choice to say the least i think you're supposed to go no shoes right maybe they, they were just like provided slippers for everybody yeah for the sort of barefoot and pregnant situation i mean i'm not aware of like a shoes off funeral but if anyone's gonna have one it's juice that is true so they're all downstairs and they're discussing sort of like oh what's gonna happen to his wife i guess we throw her in the garbage because she's not married to a man anymore <laughs> and and this is where jake and leia are gonna meet for the first time and she is upstairs airing her ankles like a whore mm. it's an interesting moment he's already like into the thing he's like clearly re read the old testament enough to know what's happening here and he's <laughs> like so your husband's dead. Come here often. <laughs> My brother. Do you, do you come here often? I just, <laughs> would, were you going to Were you going to say, did you lean in? Felt like you were going to say something? This is also where we get the tearing our clothes explanation. Okay. I did not know about that until this movie. And I don't understand it. Like one person died. So we all have to look like we got in a fight with a homeless person. <laughs> well, Why? <laughs> What's great is that there's, again, like all things in Judaism, it started out as one thing, but Jews have found a way to cheat the system with the almighty God. So instead of now, like, just actually tearing your clothes, they take a torn piece of cloth and they wrap it around your arm because <laughs> you don't want to ruin is? a nice suit. Yes, that's what that is. That doesn't count. Apparently, we spoke to God about it and apparently he's fooled. He's like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> his vision his vision is based on movement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought there was like a dedicated like suit ripper guy on the way into these. Like if you don't do it, there's like a guy keeping track of it or something because he describes it as like, I should have brought a an old suit because the guy ripped my like brand new expensive suit on the way in. <laughs> yeah, I also didn't understand when the hot doctor was like making jokes. He was like, oh, I wish I'd worn a less nice suit. And I'm like, dude, your brother just died. Like <laughs> there was zero sadness in his <laughs> eyes, in his beautiful blue eyes at any moment. Yeah. 
it, it was a weird time for crowd work. Let's be honest. Oh, maybe slutty mom had like a bunch more fabric covering her body. And then the Ripper guy did his thing. Ah, Ooh, yes. Mm, now, good explanations. Theory. This movie's coming together. And then we have this weird moment, which is going to come back a couple of times in the movie where she's like, Oh, man, you know, his soul didn't visit me. So this is real, by the way. Jews believe that when someone dies, they go and visit their true love. And yes, it does make people who don't have hallucinations super sad when they don't see them. But yeah, she's like, oh, his soul didn't visit me. And Jake has this weird moment of like, oh, about that soul visit thing. (laughs) It was amazing. Yeah, he's like, oh, didn't visit you and say goodbye. That's a dick move. He found me, NBD. We had lunch. Um, we we text all the time still because oh, he's dead. Do not did he not graphic? Okay. So now we cut downstairs to what I assume is the rabbi's office and King Rabbi, whose beard is slowly traipsing its way out the door of the room they're in, is saying. So anyway, based on the story of Onan, you two are married now. This is very serious. Please take this seriously. <laughs> and then after a super super long pause he goes nah I'm just kidding we don't do that anymore you don't actually have to marry her but we we do need to do a magic spell we have to do that so um, (laughs) please be prepared for the magic spell yeah I also didn't understand that they have to wait three months to find out if she's pregnant and then they can get divorced who are they supposed to fuck like why would she be pregnant (laughs) where did that come from it makes no sense so if she's not pregnant by his brother, then yes, very much so. That is the story of Onan is they are supposed to fuck or else she is supposed to take off his shoe, spit in his face and tell the elders of Israel that he's an asshole, which is the little ceremony. What she should do is kill herself at this time. (laughs) I think there's no other option. But yeah, they're going to check and make sure that she's not pregnant. And then three months later, she can officially do the magic ceremony of, and again, this is all real and based on the Bible, removing one of his shoes, spitting in his face, and telling the elders of Israel that he is dead to her. So, you know, they don't do the whole marriage thing anymore, but they do do the magic spell. Yeah, that was fucking insane. (laughs) So then we cut to two months, 28 days later, so that we can get on with the magic spell. And this is where we realize that the lady from Russian Doll is in this movie. (laughs) Yeah, Natasha Lyonne. (laughs) I was really upset to see Natasha Leone in this because I was just like, you're so much better than the ass. <laughs> Russian Doll is good. I like that show. Yeah, excellent show. And now we know we have blackmail material on Natasha Leone if we ever run into her. <laughs> that is true. Also, she is... Oh, she is Jewish, but she is just a beautiful, wild stereotype. The ever pregnant Orthodox Jewish woman full of bagels and donuts whose first words are about calling the matchmaker. She might as well go into a rendition of Sunrise Sunset when we introduce her. (laughs) Yeah, back to my original point. It was incredibly accurate and incredibly offensive. (laughs) Honestly, the least accurate thing is that Jewish women who are married wear wigs and the main character, Leia, isn't even wearing a nice fucking wig. This is your chance to have amazing hair all the time, and you look like a fucking child's doll. Yeah, to be fair, I think the Jews all buy them in bulk. I haven't talked to them about it at the big meetings that we secretly have, but I think they get, like, a gross of them all together. They toss them out like T-shirts at a concert. It's unclear. But Leia, and get ready, because here are the dramatic stakes of the movie, kind of, sort of, she doesn't want to be matched. She has big plans. She wants to go to CUNY. (laughs) (laughs) And Tasha Leone's like immediately furious about that. She's like, education? Are you fucking nuts? (laughs) Go out to the menstruation hut and think about what you've just said. That's crazy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, again, I hate to point this out, but like, (laughs) and I know that for most people, Jews are adorable, smelly dolls, but (laughs) this is actually incredibly dangerous. Like, this is not something that she would be able to say to someone in the community. They made a documentary about it. Like, you can't just be like, I want to get out into the big city. It's it's not like dyeing your hair a different color amongst your (laughs) friends. No, she would be immediately shunned and cut off by her family. Yeah, or kidnapped by some of the religious elite and then starved until she promised not to do it again. So, Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, but don't worry. This movie's not going to acknowledge that. This movie is going to treat it like she's decided to open up her own 
cupcake restaurant yeah. or whatever it is women do in Hallmark movies. And just to be clear, Eli wasn't exaggerating about the kidnapping and the bag. There's like people whose job it is to do that. Yeah. They're like that's they're like the kidnap, get around the marriage rule so I can fix the thing guy. Yep. That's the real thing. Right. So she heads over to CUNY for her interview. And this is amazing because we're supposed to establish in the scene that it's her dream college, right? So he's like, <laughs> oh, we have everything here. You can have a Jew roommate and we have kosher meal plans. And she's like, you had me at kosher meal plan. I don't care who I room with. I am ready to start classes tomorrow. <laughs> I just felt like this was so insane because she was sitting in this office administrator's office and just going, I would like one college, please. Like she, <laughs> she didn't even have her SAT scores yet. You can't even fucking apply. Like, <laughs> did you just wander into this office? You have to like schedule an appointment. That was so insane. And when she was like, I'd like a meal plan. You're in New York. Are you fucking high? Go around the corner to the bagel shop. You're going to get a meal plan. Relax. Oh, exactly. Also, you can get a Jewish roommate. Like, no, that's offer- not a thing. OK, I mean, they never offered me an atheist roommate at my college. I feel like they would have definitely said no if I wanted that. <laughs> it's actually the same box to check. You check Jewish and you get an atheist. <laughs> I, actually got a, I actually got a Jewish roommate who is basically an atheist. So it kind of worked out yep. both for me. But like they didn't offer it. That was just luck. <laughs> it's a twofer. But yeah, the administrator basically says what Rachel just did, which is like, oh, no, you don't come in three days before college and then declare college. I know in your community, there's a lot of declaring and shoe removal, but we need, you know, SAT (laughs) scores. So now we're going to cut over to Leia, who is doing something very sinful. She's at the movie theater watching Moonstruck, which they're not allowed to do. They're not allowed to go to the movies or, or go out alone. So it's a big deal. But but we're watching the movie. This movie will wildly swing back and forth between what is forbidden and what is not. But she's at the movies and that matters. So wild. Also, this was insane to me. She's sitting in the movie and then halfway through checks her watch and runs out like she's late for something. Like, you know, relatively how long a movie is. Did you pay to watch half a fucking movie? (laughs) Like, would you ever really be like, well, I've got to be out of here in 45 minutes. Let me sit down and start The Godfather. (laughs) No. (laughs) I'm going to catch just the first 45 minutes of Moonstruck. I don't like the whole conflicts part at the end. I like it when Cher's just a woman on her own and there's a guy without a hand. (laughs) So she hurries home. She's just been doing her Jew errands. Oh, yes. And. At this point, I couldn't help but think to myself, like, do Christians ever think, man, it would be nice to be Amish? Because Orthodox Jews are our (laughs) Amish people. And like, we don't want to be them. It's not it's not folksy fun. No, no. (laughs) I just she walks back in to her house and her mother's there and her mom is standing there with another Jew. And you can tell by, you know, the beard starting at the eyebrows. And her mom is just like, hello, welcome home. I know your prop's still sad about your husband who dropped it, but I brought you someone else with an identical beard. You'll never know the difference. (laughs) Is that what happens in the Jewish community? Like when a kid's pet dies and you replace the goldfish before they turn around and notice? Like you just replace the husband (laughs) with another Jew? Exactly. Your husband was sleeping at the top of his tank. Fish do that sometimes. They like the sunlight. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, her mother's trying to set her up and she wants none of it. So now we're going to cut to the brother who's having a doodly do to back when his brother gave him a magic Jew amulet of protection. It was a shitty necklace. That's what it was. (laughs) It's a weirdly shitty necklace. It's also weirdly feminine. Like, I I don't want to judge anyone's jewelry choices here, but it's like a bright white silver. It seemed like an odd choice for a teenager to get his little brother. Yes, agreed. I just it was so wild to me how he starts talking to his girlfriend about this and it just escalates so quickly. It starts with the girlfriend being like, well, is she pretty? And he's like, she's a Jew. And she's like, no, but she could still be pretty. (laughs) And then all of it. And he's like, "Okay, well, I guess she's fine. And the girlfriend's like, you're going to fuck her. And then when he's like, no, 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 I'm not going to spend time with her. And then the girlfriend flips and is like, she's family. How could you say that? Yeah. (laughs) And look, I just want to say I related a lot to this part of the movie. I mean, 
I personally married a goy, and I can promise you there is nothing my wife won't believe about Judaism. If I had been like, yeah, sorry, I've got to marry my dead brother. No, nope, I got to lay on. She'd be like, sure. Yeah, that's in, important to your mom, I guess. Let's uh, let's do it. We can fly for 10 minutes a year. I'm going to go do that right now. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> okay, I guess so. So, yeah, he basically explains to his girlfriend for the first time that he's off to go divorce his sister-in-law. And she is super nice about it, by the way. Like, I would not have handled this as well. I wouldn't have been like, oh, okay, yeah, no, I get it. Um, I'm from Massachusetts, so we also need to not declare dibs on our brother's sloppy seconds. I'll see you when you get back. <laughs> so now we cut over to Leia, and she's looking through her memories with his brother, and she's fondling pictures of them as children and, of course, her half of the protection Jewish amulet. Yes, and then the mom comes in and is asking her about stuff, and then Leia's like, I'm going to go to college, and the mom starts, this non-Jewish actress starts, again, throwing out the word mushuga, which <laughs> makes no fucking sense here, and is like, you have to get rid of this dream, and she goes, if you think marriage is about being happy, you're out of your mind. <laughs> I had dreams, too, before I was married. Like, it was so upsetting. Yeah, this this is the, and it, it, this is very much a thing in Orthodox Judaism, but her mom gives her basically the, like, love is for closer speech from Glenn Gary, Glenn Rosenberg. <laughs> <laughs> like, nobody loves each other. They just like each other, kind of. Look, if you aren't careful, you might end up reading, okay? We do not want you ending up reading. <laughs> yeah. It was like being hazed. The mom's describing it like she went through a sorority or fraternity and she's like, I got hazed by fucking bullshit marriage. It's terrible. <laughs> Fuck you. You're doing it, too. You're doing it again. You're not getting out of this. <laughs> and she also says right after she's like, the, the, the kid is like, I'm, I'm going to college. She's like, all right, well, you have to stop looking outward. You're going to fuck it up with God. It's all about. Looking at stop observing the universe, you evil whore. It's all about so insane. inward. And then she starts naming things like you can't do X, Y, and Z. You need to get married instead. Except those things are go to the movies and college. <laughs> yep. Like you'd best be getting married. Don't you ever fucking go to the movies instead of that. <laughs> As though it were a choice. Yeah. So Hallmark was proud of Mashuga, though. They used it. Oh, a good yeah. 25 times. Mm hmm. Also, it is was, it Mashuga or Mashugana? Are they the same thing? They used all forms. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. The word is Mashugana, but the slang of it is Mashuga. It's sort of fast Yiddish. However, I don't know which dialect coach they have. I assume he's a Nazi that had escaped to Brazil or something. Because each of these actors are like Mashuga. It was insane. Mashugana. There's Brown so sugar. So <laughs> what? <laughs> I feel like all their vocal warm-ups for every day of this movie were just Hanukkah, Hanukkah, Hanukkah. <laughs> Give me the latke moishi. Give me the latke moishi. Amazing. So now we're going to cut over to the big day. It's time for him to, for her to lace up Usual his suspects. magic shoe. And can I just say, I was kind of into the S&M parts of this movie. I was so into this scene. <laughs> oh, oh my saying, 100%. God. Yeah. Like 100%. Now I know that there's like an advantage if my sister dies and turns Jewish. If my sister turns okay, Jewish yeah. and dies. Um, <laughs> biggest part for me was the shoe. I didn't know there was like blowjob footwear, mm -hmm. but that's the scene we're watching here. And it was very erotic with the leather strappy one of two Ooh, shoes yeah. that he wears. And she's like bending, kneeling in front to unlace it. And then there's oh my god, yeah. going to be spitting. It's very sexual. It's got to be. It's got to be some guy like when this got into the Old Testament, some guy was just like into a weird scene and he like built it into the book. Yeah, there's a whole movie about this, actually, in the kink community uh, and the Orthodox community. It's called Fifty Shades of Just Wearing Black. It's pretty good. Uh, you should check it out. I also like how the rabbi was dictating all of this and it was just like he was directing a softcore porn. He was like, yeah, now put your hand on his calf. Yeah, exactly. you unlace the shoe. Goes, yeah, spit on it. Like it was. I mean, it was so <laughs> sexual. And she's down there, and she's kind of sweaty and out of breath. And he keeps looking up, like he's a little embarrassed that he's rock hard. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, this was an intensely sexual scene. I'm glad we all. At one point, it was like, way. now raise his leg, and they're both like, "What? Oh my god! Are we getting into? I don't. Okay, all right, I'm doing it. I'm doing it." And he's like, "Not that far. Not that far. Easy, easy." 
Now take off the shoe and throw it. And I was really hoping for like a bad throw that didn't count. And they have to be like, all right, it has to go <laughs> across the room. I don't know. Do we, we have to lace it back up? Start over. Start these, over. These are Jews. All throws have to count or we'd never get anything done. <laughs> <laughs> also, super small note. The rabbi has him put on this wooden show, shoe. First of all, super hot ankles. Would just like to throw that in there. Agree. But he has him walk around for a second to make sure it fits. It's getting yeah. taken off in a fucking second. Yeah. You're not wearing it around town. Like, oh, I wanted him to be like, hey, uh, do you guys have an 11 and a half in the back? Or right. Something? Like, do they have different sizes? What an insane thing. It's like your mom making you walk around in Foot Locker as a kid. She's like, no, I know you like those ones, but I got to make sure they fit you. Let me let me pinch your toe. Let me pinch Push your the toe. Heel. Push the heel. You're not pushing the heel in. I'm not getting you the exact size. You're going to have you're going to go through this in six months. <laughs> I never had a new pair of shoes because of that excuse my whole life. <laughs> so we basically get this weird S&M play, which again, hey, consenting adults. But then when it's time to do the chant, by the way, this chant is real and very bizarre because he says, like, do you deny your brother's existence? And he's supposed to say, like, yes, I deny my brother's existence. And, and this is where Jake is the character's name. Jake will stop being likable because he's just like, I can't do it. <laughs> so he drags her into the other room to say, you know what? I will marry you. And the only reason I point this out is because there was a good reason for Jake to go through with this marriage and then for them to fall in love and for the rest of the movie to follow through, right? Is that he realizes she wants to go to college and therefore goes through it so that she can be free and go to college. The movie does not make this choice. The choice that this movie makes is, I don't wanna. Right. <laughs> it was insane. This to me was the craziest part of the movie because you're right. There were a million other things they could have done with this. But instead, this hot doctor who is an atheist, who didn't know his brother, who had no religious affiliations, is all of a sudden upset about the 11 words he has to say that an old wizard man told him. And now he's like, let's just get <laughs> married. I don't want to be uncomfortable. Like, you have no God. You can't say magic words. This is insane. Yeah. And if we didn't know a Jewish, <laughs> if everyone on this podcast didn't know a Jewish guy who would do and probably has done exactly this, I would be surprised. I was just surprised how accurate it was about our friend Moishi. So <laughs> anyways, <laughs> with the subtext of this movie officially being established that it's so difficult to be an Orthodox Jewish woman that pretending to be an inherited object is better than your normal life, it's time sure. for... <laughs> her to leave mom's house to move in with her new imaginary husband. Amazing. And mom is not pleased, right? And and just to be clear, oh. mom is not pleased because she's chattel to the wrong kind of Jew. Well, and because Leia uses like the God's plan argument, like right in mom's face. She's like, no, this is whatever's happening is God's plan. And mom's like, okay, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. I have no comeback, but to fuck you. It's obviously <laughs> the thing. Don't, no doing that. Don't use my thing. My God's plan is my thing. It's my truism. Also, tiny note here. They definitely load a treasure chest full of Jew gold into that cab, right? Did everyone see oh, the yeah. Jew gold? Okay. Yeah. What? You mean the Hanukkah guilt? Yes. They load a pirate's <laughs> chest into the trunk and never acknowledge it. It was Jew gold. Yeah. What do you mean? It's just Jew gold. What else would be in there? Yeah. So she heads to his apartment for the first time, and it's a mess. Well, Whoa! <laughs> okay, not a mess. It's a Hallmark mess, which means there's an entire newspaper on the lovely kitchen counter. <laughs> <laughs> this was amazing. It is the cleanest apartment I've ever seen in my entire life. And she's, <laughs> and when he's like, sorry about the mess, she doesn't say like, oh no, this is super clean. She's like, guess you weren't expecting company. I mean, what a fucking nightmare yeah although there is a pool table and a basketball yeah. hoop and yes oh god i really wanted a super competitive basketball game on that nerf hoop to be the next <laughs> thing that happened really disappointed um, she just in dunks on him she jordan soars over him oh. Hoorah! <laughs> come on did you look at my ankles while i was doing that because if you did i have to kill me <laughs> so she shows her her room which is like a little shithole and uh <laughs> Want to mark a very inaccurate part of the movie here. Rachel, back me up on this. He asked yeah. her how many shelves in the medicine cabinet she needs, and she says one. Uh, All of them. Do some fact-checking. That's impossible. 
The answer is all of them. Yeah, a Jew needs all of the shelves on your medicine what cabinet. What a dumb fucking question. All what? of them. I'll just take one shelf. Where are you going to put all your shit? God, that was insane. That was the most inaccurate part of this entire movie. Yeah. How much medicine do you have? None of your all goddamn of business. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> a lot. Classic guys searching in our medicine cabinet. So, so stupid. Rude. <laughs> what is this for? Fuck you. Yeah, so they explain that, he explains that, yeah, he's not around that much. Sorry for not cleaning or making any effort when you arrived at my home when I officially declared in front of your community leaders that I would marry you. Here is your paper map to find your way around Washington, D.C. See you later. It's my favorite thing in the world. He was like, peace out, Girl Scout. Yeah, I I just wrote in my notes, look, if you want to kill your brother's ex-wife, there's got to be a less painful way than giving her a paper map to find her way around D.C. This was one of those moments where I again had to triple check what year this movie was made because I was like, oh, is this the 80s? Do people still? Oh, no, it's 2009. She has a phone. (laughs) Well, she doesn't have a phone, but he has a phone. Well, so I kept thinking that. But then in a later scene, she takes out her little Nokia flip phone. So I was like, bitch, you've had that the whole fucking time. (laughs) She's got a six days a week phone. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Absolutely. No, she really does. Like, that's part of the plot later. So they have this great moment where he's about to leave and she's like, hey, before you go, do you think it's stupid that I want to, you know, learn? And he, who is not indoctrinated into orthodoxy, is just like, nope, not even a little. I think it's great. Okay, I'm off to be a doctor. Bye. (laughs) That's the best. Just to backtrack a little bit. This was fucking amazing. She's looking around the apartment and she's very upset, first of all, because he doesn't have a mezuzah. And she's like, ruh what have I gotten myself into? And then what's a mezuzah? It's a little wheel that you put a little bit of yarn around uh, and then your mother wraps a single thing of yarn around it. And then you have to put it underneath your bed every night. And then when you die, they unwrap the yarn around it. Okay, ninety nine. None of like that was tricking true. me into like that doing something that it lo- I'm going to look ridiculous later. No, is that real? It's a very important Jewish tradition. No, nope, he is lying to you. Um, How dare you, Rachel? <laughs> we could have convinced. We could have convinced so many non Jews listening to this podcast just now. They'd have been like, <laughs> "Yeah, I heard they got a wheel thing, and then their mom wraps it too. They double wheel it. It's what they do." I and then you now, I honestly it. don't know whether this was a bluff or not. It's a None thing you put on the door. So, you know, in the part of Leviticus where he's like, bind it as a sign upon your hand and on your forehead and write it on the doorpost to your house. So Jews yeah. who have no sense of metaphor literally take that text, write it down and then put it in a magic box that they have to kiss every time they enter and leave a building and that is real and oh. is only slightly less crazy than the wheel full of yarn. Okay. I, later in the movie, I saw them kiss the door frame and I was like, is that a thing? Are yes. you supposed to? And you are. You're saying that's real? Very much a thing. Yes. And in fact, oh. some Orthodox Jews will not go into a house without a mezuzah. Because it's cursed. Am I supposed to do that or am I not supposed to do that? Everybody is, is a, supposed to do it. Is there a goy rule on it? No. No. Everybody? Mm-mm. Okay. Everybody. Noted. The other amazing piece was that She's looking around his apartment and he opens. First of all, he goes, you must be hungry. Like she's a weird little lost child. And he opens his fridge and he goes, one of these must be kosher, right? And he holds up an apple and some craft singles. And Mm. I was like, no, 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 (laughs) no. Yeah. Craft singles are not kosher. I actually knew that. But do you want to know what is kosher from that family of stuff? What? Polio string cheese. Mm. Yep. And Philly cream cheese. Mm. Yep. Legit. Both legit. Dated a lot of Jews who were fans of lactose. We're learning more and more. A few times. Right. Yes. <laughs> and so she's been chattel her whole life. So she's like, hey, when are you going to be home? I'll cook for you. And he's like, nag, nag, nag. We've been buried for five minutes and leaves. And she's like, well, what time will you be home? And he's like, I don't know, bitch. Yeah, pretty much. And then he heads off to the next scene. And the next scene is him going to work to break the news to his girlfriend that he married his sister. (laughs) Yep. This was. He says that. Amazing. And she's like, okay, so that's. You did the opposite of unmarrying the widow. I thought we discussed this. (laughs) Yep. You literally the opposite. You You did the opposite. And we should just point out that this movie plays it like, oh, man, she's a mean girlfriend. 
He told her that he had a religious ceremony to attend that he hadn't told her about until that very moment. And instead, he is now breaking it to her that he is married to another woman. And she is the villain for not being like, ooh, cool. Who were the bridesmaids? I didn't like, I thought Carol was being weird about it. She's the fiance, right? Yeah. Carol's the No, uh, they're not yeah, even I, engaged. Oh, they're not even engaged yet? Oh. They were just like talking about it? Yeah. yeah. I don't like, I think Carol is the bad guy. Like she's, People get super weird about the word marriage, and Carol is one of those people. Hey, I think she's being weird hey, about Heath. it. You would think Carol's the bad guy. <laughs> you would I think. I am Team Leia. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. My so, God. On the note that he You're doesn't not are... Team Leia. You guys weren't rooting for Leia in this movie. Are you serious? Oh, I was rooting for Leia. I wasn't also rooting against Carol in right. the same way that you were, Heath. She's weird. She's, be, <laughs> she's a pain about this whole thing. It's clearly just like, come on, read the book. It's I'm doing a technicality thing. Just relax. You know, sometimes here on God Awful Movies, they aren't jokes so much as they're just insights into our deepest, darkest <laughs> personalities. You're learning a lot about us here on this episode of Loving Leia. Noah's mouth hurts and Heath doesn't understand what love is. So we head back over Can't to the confirm. house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We head back over to the house and Leia has made him scrambled eggs. And this is a comedy moment because she still thinks that she's chattel. Uh, slave. Yeah. Yeah. They're selling us on Judaism because of how great it is to have and be a slave. It's a weird angle yeah. the movie's taking it's here. Strange. Yeah. It's a strange. Ricky, Ricky Lake writes a weird script. I don't know if she wrote. Whatever. It's a weird pick. Yeah. Also, she asks how his girlfriend took them being married. And his answer is awesome. She took it awesome. Look how uh, wide my eyes are. She took it great. She was a big great. Fan. <laughs> also, he's this was so weird to me, and I don't know what the actors were trying to convey, but he has a few bites of the eggs and is like, shit, I got to go to be a doctor at my important job. And then he's like, he pauses for a long fucking time and then eats all the rest of the eggs super fast and is like, mm. wow, these are amazing. I mean, it was so fucking wild. And made no sense at all and just ended up being a really long scene of this super hot guy chewing. And just to be yeah. clear, I would let him eat my eggs, but <laughs> <laughs> but the scene made no sense. It made that being I'd turn over easy. Yeah. <laughs> made like no sense. Guy. And then she gives him his packed lunch and he looks at it like, hey, maybe there are some good sides to owning a lady. <laughs> and I just wrote, <laughs> yeah. I wrote in my notes, Jewish wives, you want to fuck your mom. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> One other question about this scene. She mentions that she's bringing somebody over to the apartment to blowtorch out the oven, this which the in turn makes it become kosher. Mm -hmm. That's how. Yes. If you blowtorch stuff, it becomes kosher. I feel like that's useful knowledge. I didn't know that. So this is more Jews tricking God because his eyes are based on movement. So in the <laughs> Torah, it says that anything that's been unclean, any cooking surface that's been unclean must be touched by fire, which means in Levitical times, it meant like take the rock you cook your fucking gruel on and dump it over a fire because we don't understand germ theory, but we know that Moishi didn't get the shits after we covered his rock in fire. But right. modern Jews have That's interpreted that to be we call a rabbi who comes into your house and just blow torches around inside your oven for a little <laughs> bit and then declares okay. its magic. I was so sad we didn't get this scene in the movie. It was great. Why not? Why? Why a blow torch at that point? If it just says fire, bring a match and be like, yeah, I touched it's it. It's got to touch Good. the whole or surface. Every bit of it has to be touched. Turn the oven on. <laughs> right not an open it's not an open flame if it's not it's like a gas oven doesn't count there's whole rules about it it's great god's eyes are based on movement okay but as i understand it the word fire is interpreted to also be like electricity is fire in other rules where it's like you can't use fire on the sabbath that that's why you can't use electricity now mm -hmm. because that's interpreted to mean fire so but it's a ovens can be electric so an electric oven just turn it on <laughs> yeah, it's one or the other. You're yep. not wrong. You're not wrong, but you're also wrong. You also don't wear white underpants with a long string with the number of tribes of Israel underneath your clothes. So, you know, there's Maybe. a lot you understand that these people don't. Yes, he does. Anyways, it I'm looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> well, we've we've had a bunch of revelations about the cast of God awful movies today, and it looks like cooked eggs is what's going to pass for shenanigans in this rom-com. So. 
While you recalibrate your expectations, we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, this movie will continue to ignore how fucked up its plot is. From the makers of Loving Leia. You stay in that room, girl. Oh, old Nick, you character. Comes yet another adorable love story. Mommy, what's outside room? Nothing, nothing, and even more nothing. If you ignore the horrifying abuse simmering just below the surface. So, wait, Grandpa is my daddy? Think of the money you'll save on Father's Day presents. This Christmas, broom. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. And at this point, the YouTube video I was watching started having to cut out some of the song they didn't have the rights to. So I got to watch. Yes, me too. That was <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> terrifying <laughs> silence. <laughs> so I got to watch Leia navigate Georgetown in stony silence. I honestly, I thought it was like a crazy choice by Hallmark at this point to just be like, now it's the silence of being an Orthodox Jewish person in a city. It was serious. Oh. No, they just fucked up the, the audio track or they didn't have the rights to put it on YouTube or whatever. Yeah. Amazing. I wanted so badly because she's supposed to be going around Washington, D.C. I wanted to, to like look down at the map and we see he's just like put a big red X and a skull over everything <laughs> west of the White House. <laughs> Do not go here. You will be stabbed to death. I just like how, I mean, between the music and the way the camera was panning back and forth, her just looking at the map and then looking around, I really thought she was going to go full Dora the Explorer and just lay the map <laughs> gently on the ground and jump into it. like Going into the map. <laughs> going into my map now. I honestly have to do that if I'm looking at a map a lot of the time. I go have to into like, it? Really. I have, to, I have to, like, picture myself going into it with my phone. You know what I mean? No, I don't I'm know not. what you mean. I'm a grown-up. Um, uh, if you okay. told me that Heath was an adult version of Boots the Monkey, I would be, <laughs> I just want to throw that out there right now. If Heath's origin story is being Boots the Monkey, I get it. I've, I've spent a good deal of time looking at that little As arrow on monkey. my map screen that tells me which way I'm pointing, but it's moving too slow to catch yes, up with the direction yes. I'm pointing. And then I go in, and people catch me going into the map, and I feel stupid. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. So now we check over to her SAT class where she's got, again, like this weird teacher who's telling you this SAT prep class will change your life forever. <laughs> so she heads to SAT class and Jake, our doctor, is shopping for apology jewelry. <laughs> because if you buy women something nice enough, the things you did to hurt them don't matter. It's because it's shiny. You just distract them with shiny stuff. <laughs> What's the right jewelry for? Sorry, I got excited by my magical blowjob shoe and married a stranger. Do you have a uh, necklace? But I like how he's looking at one necklace, which, by the way, was so fucking ugly. My God. And then the woman goes into the back and brings out another one. And he's like, that one has diamonds. I'm not that sorry. It was so like, <laughs> yes, you should be. You should be. All the diamonds. <laughs> also, we should point out, Rachel mentioned this briefly these pieces of jewelry look like a mini cat cat bar. Yes. Oh. Um, but it just comes in gold or platinum, which I'm sure they only offered this because like the Hallmark channel has a deal with K jewelers. <laughs> the two owners are just holding a gun to each other's head every night before bed. <laughs> you keep up the lie. Yeah, you keep up the lie. All right. You got it. It was amazing. <laughs> you went to Jaredite. <laughs> <laughs> So now it's time for Leia to come home to find Emily, the comical, wacky best friend who is a person of color. Surprise. Yeah. She seems so surprised. She comes home and she's like, whoa, I wasn't expecting a black person. <laughs> she was not. She was she super was not. not. It's Helia. It's Helia James from uh, Weeds. I know. I was so mm -hmm. happy to see her. Love Helia. And Emily's only purpose in this movie, that's the character's name, Emily's only purpose in this movie will be to ask folksy questions about Judaism for Leia to give terrifying answers to. <laughs> and the first one is in this scene where she's like, hey, why do you wear a wig? And she's like, oh, because if a man who isn't my husband sees it, I've shamed my family and my nation. That's a direct quote from my religious holy book. <laughs> well, and she said she said that your hair can't ex sexually excite another man that isn't your husband, which I really, 
I really empathize with because I, I oftentimes worry that my hair will sexually excite people. So I really vibed with her on that. <laughs> yeah, happens <that's> <laughs> happens to the best of us. Happens to yeah. the best of us. You never we'll know. Get too you excited out, by it. So um, we'll let out a couple of locks. You get, get street up. harassed because of your hair. It's true <laughs> all the time. That said, I was really hoping that this relationship continued along these lines. By the end of the movie, she knocks Emily out, waits for two days to see if she gets up. <laughs> 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 that's in the fucking bible god also damn it also in there Wait. yeah and speaking of which helia james what's what's the character's actual name emily emily emily's like yeah so uh gonna give you some advice on this here's how you uh you know charm this man that you're obviously trying to charm uh, i'm telling you this from a place of knowledge slave it up he is gonna love it <laughs> when you cook do slave stuff in general totally great yeah. And the movie is not aware that this is very upsetting. At so all. now, let me ask you two, how true is that? Because that would explain me being single. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, <laughs> Rachel, don't listen. They mean good cooks. They don't mean you. <laughs> hey, I set off the fire alarm making toast one time. Um, maybe you could come over and I could, I don't know, burn a Trader Joe's microwave. <laughs> Let's just, That's what it says on my Tinder profile. See where the evening takes us. My uh, <laughs> apartment has mice that I'll pretend aren't real. <laughs> oh, they're real. <laughs> yes, but I moved out of that apartment. I no longer have half of my heel bone. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> oh, my God. So now we head over to check in on Jake and Carol. And can you believe it? Jake is still mad, even though he got her apology Swiss Army knife. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. So we cut from from his half apology where he explains that there you're not allowed to be upset because he explained it earlier over to her doing the Shabbos candles. Now, look, I grew up with my mother doing this, but I haven't revisited this for a long time. <laughs> it is so weird. And this actress does significantly too many hand movements. Yes. Right. Yes. Did your parents do like the she gets into Macarena at one point? Oh, my like God. It was insane. <laughs> my mom used to just there were no hand movements. She would just put her hands over her eyes. But this was like she did a dance of the seven veils and she's alone <laughs> and the lights are off. And then she's oh. just in the dark alone. Yeah. Mm, team Leia. This is good stuff. <sighs> and this is supposed to be the like she made dinner, but he won't come and eat it moment of the movie. But they didn't agree when he was coming home. She just made dinner out of habit and then was sad when he wasn't there. And if you're wondering if this movie will ever have a moment where someone points out to Leia, you are not a slave anymore. Nope. nope. This movie will never say that. No, no. He will just get used to eating the meals she prepares for him. But it was insane because, right, you're right. First of all, they had no plan to meet up for dinner. Second of all, she makes this super luxurious dinner, sets the table, but it's still dark from when she was lighting the candles. So then she's just eating alone in silence in the dark, looking sad. And it was horrifying to look into my future. Let me tell you, it's not as horrifying as you think. <laughs> it's fun. You get to eat double if you make two. Or just eat double. I feel like just relax and eat both of the things you made. The Heath and Wright story. <laughs> There's a plate for now me and a plate for later me. The Heath and Wright story. So now it's time for her to find herself a nice synagogue, specifically the synagogue of Ricky Lake. <laughs> yep. My favorite part of this was that Ricky Lake walks in and is like, I'm Jerry, but some people call me rabbi, like Bond, James Bond. It was this <laughs> insane moment. <laughs> right. And Leia loses her fucking mind like the Beatles just walked in on the Ed Sullivan show. She's like, a lady rabbi? I got to get the fuck out of here. What is happening? <laughs> oh, my God. And then she's, she's trying to connect with her and they're sitting together being Jews. And the rabbi is trying to empathize. And she's like... You miss your husband. And Leia goes, no, I miss the job. Yeah. Being a slave is weird. Yeah, wow. I, I wrote in my notes, it's hard to transition out of cults. This movie's folksy charm. <laughs> yeah, and this is where Leia explains like, oh, yeah, I'm in that like Leverett marriage thing. Kind of, though. And Ricky Lake's like, oh, do you do you do that still? I didn't think we did that still. And she's like, no, 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 no. We don't like actually practice it. That's that's crazy. Um, so, yeah, we're doing a magical shoe ceremony to cancel it. 
And <laughs> um, but then we ended up getting married during that thing. So it's it's the old love story. I'm sure you know a lot of people. You're in the middle of doing the shoe ceremony, and then was it the blowjob shoe? It, it was. It was the blowjob. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the old story. Yeah. Okay. Good. Wonderful. And then they have a little nice moment of like secrets where she's like, well, you know, sometimes I like to go to the movies and Ricky Lake is like, sometimes I like to go sit by myself and not be chattel and they have like a teehee. Imagine if we were people moment. God, it was so horrifying. Yeah, she says she goes bowling at one point. Ricky Lake's like, sometimes I'll sneak away to the bowling alley. I'm, Alone? I'm a, I'm a whore. Yeah. Are you not allowed to bowl? Is that a thing? I didn't think so. Yeah, no, there's this pretty strict rules against bowling in Judaism, Heath. Are I feel you like you just blow torch the bowling ball in your set, right? <laughs> well, you need to knock down blow torches. Yes. <laughs> you actually had to burn the building to the ground. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, he gets home that night to divorce Leia, but she's done the room up in gauche Jew decorations. Jew stuff. They took as many Jew items as they could from some rabbi's yard sale and just stuck them on the walls <laughs> in that bedroom. And it's very apparent. Yeah. And then then he just wanders into her room to fondle her wig. Oh, my God. That was insane. So mm. creepy. Oh, my God. It was horrifying. Yeah, I don't know. He was just caressing her not nice wig. Right. And he teased this earlier, but what's happening is She's doing Shabbos at this reform temple, but she's not home. So she's worried she's been murdered. And I just want to point out the absurdity of a person who left the house yesterday morning with no idea when he would be back coming into the house today and instantly wanting to call the police because he does not know where this person is who he met three days ago. Yes. And then when he's telling his girlfriend about it and she's like, oh, maybe Leia met someone. And he goes, Leia's not like that. You've exchanged eight words with her. What do you mean <laughs> Leia's not like that? What is Leia like? <laughs> you know nothing. Yeah, and in that same phone call, she's like, hey, maybe she's just like out having fun or otherwise not being a house servant for you. And he's like, yeah, maybe. You want to come over and fuck? <laughs> oh, my God, that was the best. <laughs> but anyways, she's mad that he's thinking about Leia when he should be thinking about her. No, but he's like, all right, let's go on vacation. As soon as I find my magical slave wife, we'll go to Jamaica together, just you and me. Oh, my God. Yeah. And Carol's like, OK, OK. And she, she's on board for a second here. Again, what's wonderful about Carol's character is that she keeps getting won over by the gifts and the presents, but is still mad. She's like, yes, we can go to Jamaica. What do you mean magical slave wife? The Rachel <laughs> story. At this point, I wrote in my notes, Jesus, this woman is an ATM. <laughs> it's true. But this also escalated quickly. And I'm not saying that she's the bad guy, but he keeps looking over at his phone like he wants to call Leia again. And she's like, go ahead, just call her. And then all of a sudden is in a furious rage fit and is like, you fucking love her, you whore. And then he's like, Jamaica. And she's like, OK, honey. And I'm like, who wrote this? Were you having a stroke? This is insane. <laughs> She's being mean about his spiritual journey. That's that's what I'm taking away from this. Also, that's totally inaccurate because women never swing back and forth between strong emotions. We all know that. I feel attacked so right now. So the next day... <laughs> my menstrual so cycle is none of your business. <laughs> so the next day, he still hasn't found Leia and his doctor buddy asks him if he's considered that she's, you know, dead in a ditch somewhere. To which he responds, yeah, no, you gotta wait two days before you can declare a missing person. That's the law. And... Yes, you have to wait two days before you can declare a missing person, but you can, like, still call the police. It's not like if you show up early, they're going to be like, no, no, no. Here is your countdown timer. <laughs> it will buzz when it's been 48 hours. Then you can come get seated at this Chili's and report your missing person. <laughs> <laughs> and then we cut and we see that he's rummaging through the drawers in her room like, oh, maybe she's in here. Like he forgot to check <laughs> in her underwear drawer where she could have been hiding. Yeah. And she comes back during this and she's like, hey, you going through the only sense of privacy I've ever had. And he's like, you need to tell me when you go out. And it's great because she goes, no, you put your dick in a wig. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's like, you need to tell me when you go out. And she's like, no, I actually don't. That was your whole thing. And he's like, well, I'm mad at you for some reason. Sorry, I, I went through your things. It was normal. There's. 
Might have put my dick in your wig. I don't know. It's just, it's just, <laughs> I like the Jew decorations. Also, he says he found her address book, and he that was like the plan was to help find her by finding her address book and then like going to all those places in it. No idea. Yeah, and I think the movie really missed out on an opportunity here for him to show up at a bunch of identical Orthodox Jewish houses <laughs> and be like, "Hi, are you? Mo I got to tell you, most of this book is just M's. Are you Moishi S? Is Leia here? Yeah, yeah. Leia's here. Okay, no, oh. mind. God damn it, <laughs> wrong Leia." <laughs> and then my favorite thing is he goes, I thought you packed up and left with without all of her plates and menorahs. You were just yeah. rummaging through all packed up what? <laughs> packed up her her second favorite wig and left. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is where she's like, hey, why are you upset? We're just supposed to be roommates. You don't care when you come home to me. And he's like, yeah, no, it is unclear why my character interrupted a religious ceremony and endangered his own relationship. But we're about. Three quarters of the way through the movie now, so uh, I guess we're catching feelings for each other. And she's like, okay, well, do you want to go out? And he's like, I do. We are on a date now. So they go out for Chinese food. Sounds like a great date. Yeah. And they have this amazing moment where it's basically the entirety of this date is just him saying things that would get her shunned and being like, so you never, like, I don't know, hung out with guys or fucking got boned behind a dumpster? And she's like, nope. Being outside yeah. my house without a male escort would get me kidnapped. I can't emphasize enough how many of the things you're saying would get mm. me kidnapped. So, you know, veal uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, segregation. <laughs> it's yeah, we're like that. <laughs> what? Oh, I liked yeah. her um, large amounts of fabric, though. I don't know. I got I got into it. Like she was like doing the full cover. She had the like a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know. I liked it. All right. Keith's found a new kink. We're learning things about ourselves in each moment of this movie. <laughs> you didn't find Leia attractive in this scene with the like come on, very modest, but also, you know, slightly erotic. All right. Slow down. Thing. <laughs> slow your roll. It, it, it was. And then, it was and then of that course, she asks him how he met Carol. And he's like, oh, <laughs> oh my God. You know, with consent, the usual way. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, it is a Hallmark movie. So she says, hey, do you want me to move out and resolve all the dramatic tension in the movie? To which he responds, no, the movie isn't over yet. <laughs> well, here's what was so upsetting to me is that, yes, he got stuck in this situation initially. But then, A, it was his fault they stayed married. That was not her idea. And she was like, are you sure about this? And he was like, totes my goats. And then he's bitching to his friend like, Oh man, if only I could get out of this situation. And then she's like, hey, want to get out of this situation? And he's like, no. no. And I'm like, this is all your fault. <laughs> I want to not be in trouble, but also not make a decision. It no. was Both. insane. He had so Please. many outs and took none of them. <laughs> all right. So now they're walking home and he offers her his jacket. Ooh. Ooh. It was actually not his jacket. It was yeah. his scarf. It was a scarf. <laughs> Which I found really upsetting. He like pump faked the jacket. He's like, How? well, eh, I'm cold too. You can yeah. have a scarf, one glove. <laughs> he cuts off the pinky of one glove. He goes, you can have this. <laughs> this is also where they have this amazing confession moment. She's like, when your brother died, I was watching a movie, which is why his soul couldn't find me. To which he responds by immediately taking a phone call. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is her line. And then his phone rings and he's like, ooh, I got to take this. That was my girlfriend. Yeah, hold hold that thought. Hold that thought. You thought your husband's soul couldn't reach you because you were disobedient. Hey, hon, what's going on? <laughs> also, you're forgetting one of the best parts about this scene is while they're walking, he's like, you know, you weren't what I expected. She's like, what do you mean? And he goes, you're so sassy. You got spunk, kid. <laughs> yeah. Like, I didn't expect a slave to have a personality. <laughs> you're very, uh, how do I say yeah. this? Back, you pack talk a lot more than uh. I expected. But seriously, I like it a little uppity. That's, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, this is nice. This is a, this is a fun thing we have. So go make some food. Uh, I'm going to fuck my fiance and we'll meet back here. Like half hour, hour. Yep. Great. That's what they do. She's going to make food. And then she goes through his drawers. <gasps> I wanted her so badly to find a bunch of end trainers. 
<laughs> what is an end trainer? Is I'm what gonna I leave you. Know. You're gonna Google that on your own, Heath, and right. Well, and then I'm she Googling also it right now. She looks at a picture of him and Carol at a dance, and the subtext is supposed to be, "Wow, showing my shoulders in public. What would that be like? Be like." be like but we don't fade to a doodly do it's just her you know rocking with her head closed about the idea of not wearing seven sweatpants as a as a shirt all day okay is an end trainer a pokemon device yes it is the next morning so now we come <laughs> to the next day um tell me what it is is it a sex thing it is yes so she is What's heading happening? over to the sat class <laughs> what and he offers, she's working on her SATs and he offers her help. And she is working on, correct me if I'm wrong in this, she's working on fractions for the SAT? It's not just fractions. fractions. It's fractions phrased as how many fucking pieces of pie you have left. Like, is this eighth <laughs> yep. That was so insane. She was like, if there are six pieces and I eat two, oh, what is the answer? <laughs> it was insane. <laughs> And the solution he gives her, by the way, is wildly wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's like, look for the lowest common denominator, which has absolutely not. You're just multiplying two fractions together and then you're done. And there's a, you don't have to do any of that. It's fine. Yeah. But but instead of that, he's like, well, this is obviously beyond you. Do you want to go swimming? <laughs> so now we have the weird, playful, I've never let a man see my shoulders and legs who wasn't probably sexually assaulting me. <laughs> Swimming scene. <sighs> yeah. Like the natural next step. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't really make sense either because she's like, all right, I'm about to get in the pool. Look away. But she's wearing more than a towel under the towel by a lot because we see yeah. her bathing suit for a second. And it's like a like a medieval knight's romper armor. It's large <laughs> and strong. She's she's wearing a swimsuit that would have made my grandmother call her a prude in the 20s. <laughs> I mean, and he's so playful about it. He's like, oh, you're going to you're going to be swimming in your towel. And she's I was like, oh, sorry. Let her just forget her incredibly abusive upbringing real fast. No big deal. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to inconvenience you with how this woman was raised to think of herself and her body because you're trying to get a swim on. But now we get a little montage, right? She's considering buying a skirt that doesn't cover her ankles and going to the library. Ooh, And again, these are all horrifying revelations, but the Hallmark music playing in the background, or at least most of the background, because my YouTube movie also cut out the background music here, is like, bum, bum, de -bum, -bum, de -bum, bum I expected, like, the other Orthodox Jews to burst into song around her, like, there goes the girl. With the bam, 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 bam. <laughs> all right, so now Emily and Leia are friending some more. They're best friending. They're best friending. And Emily is giving her terrible advice because Leia's like, I love him, which sucks because he is a girlfriend. And Emily's like, don't worry, girl. I'm sure he hates his girlfriend. If you keep cooking, he'll come back. Yes. Which is accurate, as we find out momentarily. Yes. Her argument is that he wouldn't be nice to you unless he wanted to be married to you forever. It was very upsetting. Yeah. But he does. That's what's happening. He does. Yeah. In to the be movie. fair. To be fair to Emily, she is correct. So he's at the hospital when he gets a call from Leo. Uh-oh, act three, her mother is coming and they have to pretend to be married. <laughs> Which equates quick buy a dining room table. They bought so much furniture. I was like, where have you been sitting all this time in your home? <laughs> they buy so much furniture. And I want to talk about this scene where they're buying the table. So they got the two actors and they're sitting at this table and there's nothing to say about tables, which is true. So they're like, yes, we'll take it. And she turns to him and she says, we should probably get a rug as well. At which point the under five other actors screams, I have rugs. Sorry, too strong. <laughs> um, we also <laughs> offer rugs here at the store. If you would like one. What does this all mean? Just you have to have stuff like your, your apartment doesn't have tables and rugs if you're Unless you're married, like that's a married thing. Yes. Ah, uh, someone's never been visited by a Jewish mother-in-law. So stupid. I yeah, have, I have a table. No, you don't. <laughs> I have, I have, you have a you have, have a, a TV table. table. You have the wrong table. You have the wrong it, table, Heath. It's it came with the apartment. It's 
Not mine, but oh, I have it. so upsetting. Um, There's also this weird wackety schmackety do moment where they go to the jewelry store to buy wedding bands, obviously, so that they can fool the mom. And the sales clerk is the same lady as when he bought the Kit Kat bar earlier. And there's this like very broad comedy moment of like, oh, <laughs> you're cheating on your wife. I am. I promise. It's it's just a weird moment. It's it would like be like if he started hitting her out in front of the thing, and she was just like, I don't see nothing. <laughs> that is a great description of exactly what happened. <laughs> but meanwhile, they're like. It's like they're on a cute date montage. They're going around buying shit. And she's like, let's get candles. And he's like, is that what Jews do? Sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> they got the music from the sting going. It's pretty fun. It's a fun moment. Yes. But, but he still hasn't broken the news to his girlfriend. So now it's time for him to update his girlfriend about the plot twist, which he does in, in the form of, okay, you know how he's going to, divorce that lady well ah instead of going on a trip with you i'm gonna do a pretend married with her for her parents are you mad you're mad oh so mad <laughs> and he's like i'll buy you anything you want we'll go to jamaica tomorrow or the next day we could go to prague <laughs> you want another necklace i'll get you another necklace <laughs> yep and carol's being weird about it again she's being weird. this is exactly how you push your fiance into the arms of his fake wife i'm just saying like carol's not even <laughs> smart about it <laughs> yeah, Carol's the problem here. Yeah, no, certainly. <laughs> this, this movie appeals to everybody. So he tells Leia that he's staying and, uh-oh, if you're staying, it means we're going to have to stay in the same bedroom. I wrote in my notes, right, see, if you're going to stay, my mom is going to need to see your dick up to the hilt in my vagina. <laughs> it's just part of the <laughs> part of the thing. It's amazing. Up to the hilt. So this next part is started super realistic where the mom comes into the apartment and is looking around judging everything. Heath, again, you wouldn't know what that's like. But the, cut, the table was wrong. The lamps are wrong. But this is where it gets really out of hand. They purchased the tackiest pillows I've ever seen in my entire life. They say like, Shabbat Shalom. And they're they in do. this horrible white polyester. And the mom goes, nice pillows. No <laughs> self-respecting Jewish mother would have liked those polyester pieces of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows that all Jewish mothers like their pillows and nobody else's. Those yes. are the only acceptable pillows. Correct. So do some fucking research before you write a movie. Exactly. Well, it looks like pillows is about as close to suspenseful as this one's going to get. So we're going to pause here for a quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Can they convince her mom that they're really in love? So the fuck what if they can't? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the evanescent conclusion of Loving Leia. What does evanescent mean, Eli? It's a band. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, your brother's ex-wife is going to live with you? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I, I don't know. And you're still married to her? Uh, I mean, kind of, I guess. It's not like it's not like a real marriage. Okay, but to be clear, it's not so she can escape from her home life. No. And it's not because you have feelings for her? No. So then why did you do it? Mm. What's mm? Uh, mm, mm. Okay, and you did all of this without telling me. I mean, are you mad? I mean, I'm upset. I just want to understand why you would think it's okay to bring another woman into your home marry her, not tell me about it, and then expect me to only be okay with it, but not even ask you why you did it. So you're mad. Jesus Christ, never mind. Wow, Rachel, you really nailed that skit. Thanks, I had a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to open up this time on that wacky, but what if he Jews wrong dinner with mom? <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what this is. Yeah. First thing he does wrong, I didn't quite understand what was wrong about it. He was putting butter on the table, and you can't have butter on the table when there's brisket on the table? It, Why, you can't right? eat meat and milk. It's not kosher. Well, first of all, butter on brisket sounds amazing, but you can't even just have them separately? No. Nope. You can't have them in the same meal. Yeah, you're not supposed to eat them within an hour of each other, I think is the rule. Okay. 
But like, all right, so eat the brisket and then like have some butter an hour later. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Problem solver, Keith. See, this is the rabbinical You're commentary. You're welcome, Judy. <laughs> we're lacking. Uh, he also calls her sweet cakes, and mom responds <gasps> to this like he asks for a blowjob at the <laughs> dinner table. I threw up in my mouth a little bit when he said that. There's also this great moment where she's like, so you're a doctor who saves lives. And he's like, yeah, um, I'm actually working on a cardiac. And she's like, eh, 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 are you part of our cult or not? That was great. <laughs> and he's like, I'm part of a gym. And she didn't appreciate the humor in, in, in that. Oh, she did not think that was funny. Mm -mm. I will say, though, I really empathized with this part when Leia was like, mom, he's a doctor. Because every time I've started dating somebody and told my parents about them, whether or not they are a doctor, I go, Mom, he's a doctor. Just because podcaster doesn't usually fly. But <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I get okay. it. Very competitive sometimes. There's <laughs> thousands of applicants. I'll, I'll have you know we have dozens of people in our category. Dozens. <laughs> <laughs> we are just below the seventh most popular Game of Thrones We Watch podcast. <laughs> Refreshing. Okay, still just blows seven. But what are you could have been? Just you know, but we gotta get those guys any time now. They don't even edit. <laughs> so <laughs> and then of course because we do need some accuracy, it's been three minutes. Mom wants to know when he's gonna fuck a baby into <laughs> into her daughter. <laughs> and his answer is great. He's like, um soon? Yeah, right. <laughs> and that's negative somehow. He's like Soon, but you know, like I'm waiting for, you know, set up my uh, independent practice, make a little bit more money. I want to be a dad who like, you know, has time, who fathers, like a dad who fathers. And she's like, cuck. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. So he's like, yes, Leia's an amazing cook. And then Leia's like, but my mom is the best. And then he's like, I'm sure she is the best. And she's like, hold on. Are you saying you want to fuck me and not my daughter? And then I'm like, does he not know the rules of Jewish marriage? You need to fuck your wife and her mother. It's really. At, oh, my God. Oh, no. What, Interesting. Have, I, what have I done? <laughs> I made a terrible mistake. Interesting for me. He then writes, <laughs> I have no feelings <laughs> unless you had feelings. Did you have feelings? <laughs> did you, what, did you, what did you say? What about rules? I'm a rule guy. I just want to know what the rules are and don't want to break them. <laughs> I'm uh, climbing so out my window of my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so dinner ends and they're in the bedroom together when she realizes, oh, no, she doesn't have her nightgown. Now, I wouldn't mention this because it wouldn't matter in any sane world, but it is going to matter later to the plot. So they come up with this insane excuse where it's like, oh, we'll say you had Ethiopian meat. No, we'll say you were beating me for swimming. It's the perfect crime. <laughs> oh, my God. Ah, that would have been a good, that would have been better than the Ethiopian measles. Yep. Yep. Yeah. She left her nightgown under the pillow in the room that she sleeps in and mom's in that room now. That's what's happening. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Who puts their nightgown under their pillow? You know what? That my, was my question. <laughs> my mom keeps her pajamas under her pillow. Interesting. It's, maybe it's a Jew thing. It's a Jew thing. Because I do that sometimes. <laughs> it makes a certain amount of sense. It does. It's like, oh, because that's where I go to bed. So I put my little bed clothes. Yeah. Where my and bed like are. they stay warm and they're not like out in the well, open. I disagree with stay warm there. OK. That's, yeah. I feel like that's the, not how warmth works. Everything feels warm to me. I don't know. Works. Kind of just moves around. Evenly, I put them on. I just put them under the oven in the broiler for like <laughs> right. a good exactly. minute and a half. Just get the tops toasty brown. Also, there's there's one other moment here where Leia has to go into the closet to like get whatever she's going to change into because the nightgowns in the other room, and she knocks over the pool cue and the, <laughs> the balls from the pool table that they've hidden in there. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. First of all. Did they hide the pool table somewhere? Like, how? why would... Oh, my God, I didn't even away? think about that. You can't oh. hide just the balls of a pool table <laughs> and accomplish anything. Uh, it's just my normal pocketed felt dinner table. <laughs> yeah, I was really hoping we would get a scene later where they, like, pass by the pool table and the mother's like, what's this? And they're like, oh, this is a, a dreidel. He, like, lifts it up and spins it. <laughs> <laughs> smashes through the window. Yep. Gimmel. Good times. Yeah. Good times. But but yeah, so the <laughs> the pool balls fall on the floor and like the noise of that was supposed to be suspicious. Yeah, why? Like the mom was going to be like, are those fucking pool balls in there? Like, are those anal beads <laughs> rolling around on the floor? Like what? 
from the other room. I don't hear conception in there. <laughs> uh, follow up, mom. How do you know what the sound of anal beads falling on the floor is? Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> we're, we're tied. I don't ask any more questions. Now it's you. <laughs> and then they have this super sad moment where they're like, hi, this is, this is like it happened one night. You know that movie from the 1940s oh. about purity? It's charming. This movie's like that, except we have cell phones. <laughs> so it's less cool. I like that she likes the old movies. Team Leia. She's got cool things going on. They've, they've characterized her. She's got cool things going on, but I also wish she wasn't afraid to be in the same bed as her husband. I just like how she was originally going to sleep on the chair, and he says jump in the beds wider than Rhode Island. Is that a saying? Did I miss something? That's like the smallest state, which is just I was going to say, use. Rhode Island's not known for its wideness. Right, it's a like, very mixed metaphor. <laughs> yeah. Also, just side note, it happened one night. The punchline of that movie is them fucking <laughs> the entire but The whole point of that movie is, are they going to fuck? And then the last frame of that movie is him blowing a horn to lower the wall of Jericho. It's just, you get it? Because they're fucking. Is that whole movie. <laughs> anyway, so now she's showing her mom around town, and it's time for them to have a confrontation. She found her nightgown. She isn't sleeping in there. She's not really chattel at all. And she's also just pissed about everything. They're walking around town. She's like, what is this fucking sidewalk? This doesn't look religious. <laughs> And then she she starts to bring her to a reform temple. She's like, Mom, I want to show you the life I'm creating for herself. And she's like, a reform temple? Like, it's not Auschwitz. Relax. <laughs> you are a murderer. Also, Mom's selling New York here over D.C. Yes. Which should be easy, but she's not doing it well. No. Just like bring a bagel and you lay us back, back in Brooklyn tomorrow, right? Just New York's yep. better. Absolutely. But yeah, no, she wants to bring her home to the apartment where she can live with her. And Leia says no. So the scene ends. So Jake comes home and when he asks how the conversation with uh, mom went, little moment here as he comes in, he goes, sorry, I'm late. The line at slow most was huge. <laughs> oh, my God, that was insane. <laughs> I, I love the idea. It's Chinese food, by the way, which makes it doubly awesome. I love the idea that the makers of this Hallmark movie think that like, Jews have a secret underground network of Chinese restaurants owned by Jews. Yes. That only they eat at. We do. Called maybe Shlomo's, the Chinese <laughs> restaurant. Yes. But he doesn't get, he doesn't, he doesn't quite hit Shlomo's. He says Slomo's was the best. <laughs> it was the best. <laughs> but he comes home and then she's like, oh, let me return all the furniture. You weren't going to use it anyways. Where? I just don't understand. They bought a whole house worth of furniture, but he's been living there. It's so confusing. Also, <laughs> she's like, so when are you and Carol going on your trip to Jamaica where you can, you know, raw dog? And he's like, oh, gosh, forgot to tell you because my character never has any motivation in this movie. We broke up. Um, there was that thing about me being married to you. Also, I never loved her. So that's probably worth mentioning. <laughs> Anyways, you want to come to a black tie event with me? Huh? I know you got black clothes. You want to come? Yeah. It's just a weird <laughs> transition. He also mentions that she's a better dancer than him as yes. part of the problem. He was like, she was always a better dancer than me anyways. And I'm like, you're really laughing off this breakup, huh? <laughs> yeah, you're really, you're really torn up about this breakup because you asked me on a date at the end of the sentence where you revealed it to me. Yes. Also, that would mean I would need to find a worse dancer than me, and that's not <laughs> voting well. No. But don't worry, because that means it's time for a shopping montage. My favorite part of any movie. Oh, and Emily is so amazing here. She's like, honey, we got to find you a dress that doesn't make you look like you're a member of the cult that you are a part of. Oh, this was rough. I mean, this is supposed to be the like, she's all that moment, right? Mm -hmm. But it's. It's a montage of like de Jewishing. That was offensive, right? Yes. Very. Where she very slowly and sensually removes her wig and lets her hair fly free. It was like the scene from the Princess Diaries when they put a crown on Anne Hathaway's head. <laughs> <laughs> but but instead of a crown, it's just the hair she's had her whole yes, life. Exactly. Yeah. Also. I don't want to be that guy, but the chances of red hair surviving inside the Orthodox community, 
actually pretty good. Recessive genes, kind of our thing in the Orthodox community. Mm, Why do you think I color mine red? (laughs) (laughs) I like that he responds to that. She comes out for the first time. He's never seen this before, I guess. She comes out with just her hair, which is longer. And he's like, oh, look at that. Look at that five inches of bottom hair. Mm. Yeah, he was like, oh, I've always liked hentai porn. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So they go to the party and she's awkwardly introducing herself to people when, oh, no, Carol's here with her new boyfriend. Damn, Carol moved on fast. Good for Carol. Yeah. So and she fast. found like uh, like an in your face, like even better looking doctor boyfriend, which was pretty good work by her. Yes. Who's a better dancer? <laughs> yeah. I like how people were like, oh, Jake. Oh, it, is this one your wife? Like, is this? Yes, this is the woman I own. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll take you out to the garage later and show you my collection of women. It's really I uh, just added to it. I think you're really going to like what I have. <laughs> got an Italian one recently. It's pretty fantastic. So, yeah. <laughs> There's the awkward, uh uh-oh, there's the ex-girlfriend. And then we have the typical line that means nothing but has to be in a Hallmark movie. She goes, she's beautiful. And he goes, no, you're beautiful. That was insane. (laughs) I really wanted her to be like, okay, um, you didn't really rank it, though. You just said (laughs) the same word again. Can you rank it? I wanted her to be like, you know, two people can be beautiful, right? I mean, I know that the... Ownership quality is actually part of the Hallmark thing because it's reinforcing Christian patriarchy in a soluble way. And we're introducing Jewish patriarchy here. But like, can you just let two women be beautiful? And he's like, no, no, (laughs) you win at womaning. Yep. And then they decide to dance for a second. Mm -hmm. But But only a moment. It's yeah. For just a real fast, which was probably good given the cast. The way they get to that, though, was ridiculous. (laughs) At one point, Carol's like. Oh, is that background piano chords, the song playing? This is my jam. <laughs> and then they they dance to like not a song. It's just, yep. it's just literally somebody like warming up on piano. It was great. <laughs> just someone doing scales. Also, when they danced, I wanted Leia to like break into Hava Nagila and all the circle dances. Right. She's like, come <laughs> on, Bebo, you know this one. Hava Nagila. Who's sitting in a chair? Let's do this. Hava <laughs> Nagila. <laughs> No, just me. Just you. And then they get home and they Hallmark kiss for a second. It was pretty strange, though. She went from being so uncomfortable because she hasn't been out in public, like without her wig and covered from her eyeballs to her toes in a long time. She switches from that to sexy bedroom eyes in a second. She does. Mm. She's yeah. immediately like putting her finger in her mouth. Like it, it flips <laughs> so hard and so fast. Yeah. So now it's the next morning. They have had Hallmark sex and we get the saddest trope in Hallmark movies, which is that they reveal most women's fantasies to be someone temporarily treating them with basic human decency. To be fair, same. (laughs) I mean, here's the thing. He's not even like really pampering her. He like made a little bit of breakfast. Yeah, and he did that thing where he pours the orange juice that he has in a container into a carafe just to pour (laughs) it into another glass. Fuck you. Fuck everybody who does that. (laughs) See, this is why you'll never star in a Hallmark movie. I want someone to pour orange juice into a carafe into another vessel for me to drink it out of. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bitches love carafes, man. I I have a carafe. Stupid. Yeah, but you don't use it. (laughs) I, for for wine and no, whiskey. he uses it for himself. Yeah. <laughs> he pours it for himself that he drinks directly. I have a, I, I have two dedicated crafts. I have like a decanter for the wine. I have a whiskey craft. Why? All right, okay. relax. There we go. Orange um, juice in it and then clean that. What the fuck's happening? <laughs> uh, so yeah, we get a montage of him treating her with basic decency. I, I got bored during this part of the movie, yeah. so most of my notes for this scene are a rant about how I don't think people shit on Michael Bublé for the right reasons. Like, he just sings songs your mom likes, and he's not even an artist, but everyone wants to behead him on TV. I don't think it's fair. Anyways, they're doing Shabbos. <laughs> he's watching her sleep. By the way, while he was watching her sleep, she had loudly farted. <laughs> this movie would have won me back, but yes. no. We don't get that much. Fr- and then we have this weird one. He watches her sleep and then he like puts away the picture of his brother because now, even though he has been defined by marrying this woman because of his brother in this moment where the, the fucking stakes of the movie have been resolved, they realize they don't have the full 90 minutes. So now he's guilty about fucking his brother's yes. wife. 
Yeah. Not only that, but A, do you think the picture can see you? And B, I thought he was going to put it away and then they were going to start fucking, which is like medium understandable. No, he puts the picture away and then goes the fuck to sleep. (laughs) See, okay, I thought there was like some dark stuff going on. I thought they were just like intentionally keeping the picture of the brother next to the bed so they could get him in on it. Ooh, maybe. Ooh, I like that. I think it's too kinky for this movie. I feel like like they should add that to the Bible. Like that should also be the rule. Look, if I've known anything, it's that you're allowed to add stuff to the Bible according to Orthodox Jews. His vision's based on movement. So now it's time for them to meet his mother. And she's not Jewish at all, so she's super nice. She's like, hey, your uh, hair isn't covered. And she's like, oh, yeah, no, your son fucked the Jew out of me. (laughs) And mom's just like, nice. He'll do that. He will do that. That's my boy. (laughs) So, yeah, they're making small talk for a little while. But again, it's time to introduce some dramatic tension. So they're talking about the unveiling. And it turns out that he has been hiding the letters from the funeral parlor about the unveiling. So when they ask him about it, he's like, I'll get to burying my dead brother when I get to it. Go. He had such a bizarro reaction to that. He was like, stop asking so many questions. And the mom is like, I just wanted to know if we should have lunch that. (laughs) <laughs> was the extent of my questioning. I don't even care. I'm fucking my brother's sister. Go. Go. It was insane. You're not the boss of me. What do I say at that thing? Like, just, okay, goodbye, dead brother. She might have an orgasm soon. You, like, loosen the jar, though. That was totally you. That was your, well, your, <laughs> your work. Literally. That's awkward. I wanted to see more of this conversation, though, where, like, I wanted to see mom get into it and just be like, all right, Leia. So, <laughs> now that we're here, this is perfect. Uh, whose dick game is better? Just like honest answer. Like, oh, yeah. Which one's bigger? I think is it because as a parent, you should wonder. You want right. to know. If I was a mom a or a dad, uh, it would be probably dad. If I was yeah, one of the what other. What the hell? Um, if I was a parent. <laughs> that was insane. Uh, I'd want to like uh, describe the shapes. You know, like I saw them when they were kids. Like I want to know. I'd want to get into it. All right. Well, we're glad you're not reproducing. So <laughs> <laughs> that scene ends and Leia goes into the bedroom to find him moping. And she's like, hey, I can't help but notice that you're freaking out and introducing tensions into the last something like five minutes of this movie. What's going on? And he's like, so you remember how at the beginning of the movie, I felt like I was betraying my brother by not marrying you. Well, now I feel like I am betraying him by marrying you. And it's honestly, it's like this had nothing to do with you. And it's about me treating the women in my life like emotional pawns to checkmate guilt I have about my dead brother. You know, (laughs) I'm the protagonist. To which she's just like, well, you know, um, it's a Hallwork movie, so I guess I'm going to be okay with this behavior. (laughs) (laughs) I also really liked that he's all upset and worked up and he turns to her and he's like, don't you feel guilty? And her response is basically just, no, he was my master. I didn't love him. So this is fine. (laughs) And he's like, did you love him? Did you love him? And she's like, no. No, no, not even a little. Our parents arranged for us to be married and we barely spoke. Yeah, but did you love him, though? Okay, I'm done with this. Describe his dick. We didn't talk about that earlier at dinner. Yeah. And then you get this amazing part where he leaves like in a huff and she's trying to call him and he's ignoring her calls. And I got to be honest, this is the most turned on I was during this entire movie. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So now we cut to, so he doesn't answer her calls, which means Leia's packing her shit and she's going to go home to Jew Brooklyn. And when she does that and she meets her mother, she's like, hello, I am ready to be submissive once again. And the mother's like, thank Jesus Christ. (laughs) I mean, whatever our guy is. Thank him. I don't die. Yeah. Yeah. And so Jake sort of mopes his way home and his mother's there and she's like, hey, you drove your wife out of the house last night and he's like yeah her um her sat scores are here should i um mail them to her what do you think and mom's like no you need to go up there and you need to go do that like what it's at the cemetery the unveiling is that where it happens yes it's Uh, this happens at her house that happens at the house oh the unveiling happens at a house no 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 the unveiling is the unveiling of the grave because you do it a year later yeah, no, the 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 big love confrontation that's about to happen is at the house. Oh, right. But mom here is saying like, all right, you got to go up and do that unveiling thing at the cemetery and apparently tell jokes 
they were describing it as you would need to tell jokes at that. Yeah, event. it's like is an that, open mic. It is. Yeah. No. Oh. Yeah, everyone's supposed to do a tight five. That's fucking cool. Yeah. Please do a tight five when I die. That's very <laughs> By the important. Way, I will me. do a tight five when you die. I've seen your <laughs> five. It's. Not. I already have it written. <laughs> it's ready to go at any moment. Okay. Well. <laughs> and as it should be, knowing my health. You're welcome. So. <laughs> <laughs> now we cut over to the synagogue again, and this is the crazy nothing temple. And he basically shows up to tell Ricky Lake, he's like, hi, I'm here to dump my emotional baggage on you because that's literally all my character does in this movie is find women with substantially more responsibility than myself and then act them to be my emotional mommy. And Ricky's like, oh, yeah, I'll be your emotional mommy. Done. Yes, but she also just her whole tone for the movie is don't forget I'm a cool rabbi <laughs> with a wink and a nod. Yeah. So we cut back on Leia and she's unhappy and her her mom's like, okay, Leia, if you're going to fucking mope around for the rest of your life, go back to the almost Goyim. Just like go back to him. No questions about what happened. She's just like, yeah, no, it's obvious you want to be with him. So get out of here. She also gives the weirdest advice ever. She says, problems don't leave, Leia. People do. That was insane. What is that? Mean? What? First of all, it no, no, that was infuriating. <laughs> also, sometimes those two things are the same thing, right? Like if yes. you've got an abusive husband, the problem of him and him can leave at the same time. Or you can work out problems and then they go away. But the people say, I don't know. You fucking hate her. <laughs> <laughs> this is also where mom reinforces that she never argues with God. I wanted her to be like, I never argue with God. That's how I got this cut over my eye. <laughs> It's my fault. I made him mad. I also, though, and at this point, like, I should be really mad at Hot Doctor because he was shitty and she left and he wanted to get, like, I should be so mad, but he's so hot that I forgive him. Well, good thing because so does Leia. <laughs> she gets out of the building. And again, this is how stupidly written this movie is. She walks out of the building to get in a taxi to go back to him in D.C. And he pulls up in a car because he went to her in Brooklyn and they have a moment of like a, oh, were you doing the run romantic end of the movie thing? Yep. I was doing the run romantic. Uh, oh, uh. Yeah. Cool. We could have texted and then just one of us. <laughs> now we have two vehicles. Right. So now we added us. five hours to this movie, too, where they both did it, <laughs> but not with perfect timing. Then they got to go back again. <laughs> All right. You stay. We've done this three times now. You stay. I'm going. <laughs> oh, I thought you said I stay. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, my I stay to the left. From the first, my left names. stay. <laughs> yeah, but they they make up and he declares that I feel like you're a gift from my dead brother. That is the last romantic line of the protagonist in this movie. Yeah. yeah. The dead brother did this on purpose as a lesson. Like He got married to an 18 year old, had sex with that uh, basically child for a while. As a long con to eventually redeem his brother because of a technicality in the Bible. Yes. Yep. That's the positive lesson of this movie. Game plan. It's the, not just the positive lesson, but the last spoken lines. Amazing. Jesus. So yeah, we cut over to Ben's grave. In my mind for a second, Jake had died and we were going to have a third little brother set up a sequel. Just like a teenager who's got really ripped abs and just, she, Leia's just like, they keep getting better. <laughs> Face to camera. Da -da 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 <laughs> but no, they both put their little magic necklace amulet thingies on his grave and then go to raw dog each other forevermore. That's the happiest of endings. You think they were setting up like a sequel? <laughs> oh God, I hope so. Can I come With back the for like... the next one? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Loving spent. You can come back for the sequel. Love spending time with Leia. <laughs> <laughs> All they, right. They end it like Inception with a spinning dreidel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So correct me if I'm wrong, but is the moral of this movie literally any marriage is better than one to an Orthodox Jew? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, great. Rachel, thanks so much for joining us. I know it's the second most painful process this podcast has ever put you through. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, it's been a 
lot of fun. No, this is great. This is great. And while that does it for our review of Loving Leia, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still aren't allowed to retire. So Heath, tell us, what's on deck? Badge of Faith? Is that mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. It's about uh, a police and religion. Blue Lives Matter to God. <laughs> Blue the movie. There you go. So, with that to look forward to, and I do mean look forward to, we'll bring episode 227 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Rachel for suffering alongside us today, and an even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make this show go. If you'd like to help count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every single episode. You can also help us out a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes, and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed the show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the pedo law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson (laughs) takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Rachel Goldberg, I'm Eli Bosnick, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. It turned out that Rabbi Benjamin actually faked his death, and then a bunch of rabbis had to argue about the technicalities of those new rules that they had to make. Ricky Lake is making an amazing sequel about it. Bigots went on to still somehow believe those dudes are running the world. Leia went on to be adorably kidnapped when her family found out she wasn't covering her head anymore. Go ahead. ahead. You're, you're good. No, go ahead. No. Mm-hmm. You go. Of the in between <laughs> Zencaster <laughs> tracks for this. I just, please tell me you guys all started recording right then, and the first thing we hear is them whispering. The first thing that Morgan <laughs> hears is them whispering, I hate you to each other. <laughs> I'm upset because I got distracted, and I wish I had just gone, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I can just hear Heath crawling up inside his own asshole, and it's a delightful sound. I can't be on the episode anymore. I got shot. Pip. <laughs> well, I'm off to the hospital. <laughs> Someone stabbed me in the leg with his letter rope there on my desk. All the way to the bone. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.